we just had that terrific segment about Wyland, and he's located in Laguna Beach, and joining us now is April Solomon. She's with the Sawdust Art Festival, and you actually went to Laguna Beach High School, and you're a local person as well. Yes, I am. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, background. Yeah, uh, my when did you become interested in art? My whole life. Really? My whole life I've been uh, very involved with drawing and painting. Drawing was my first love. Mm -hmm. And I can remember as far back as kindergarten of knowing what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. Wow. And I just knew without a shadow of a doubt that this is my passion, this right. is what I wanted to do. Yeah. We had your father on last week, right? What yeah. kind of, <laughs> that helps a little bit, right? What kind of influence does he have on your art and, and the growth of your art to some point? Uh, he, he was always very, very supportive, and my mom as well. And my mom, she's not a painter, but between my mom and my dad, they were both very influential on my, uh -huh. on my art and just wanted me to pursue it in the best way that I could. Yeah. And, you know, I've never, uh, he's never given me lessons, like one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one lessons. I've watched him paint, uh, but when I show him a piece that I've done, you know, he always, you know, Kinda tells me what I it. could do. Yeah. And your art's a little bit different than his art. Very different. <coughs> Yours yeah. is more, uh, I want to say, visionary or fantasy-like? Right. Uh -huh. Where do you get these ideas? Oh, that's a big From question. everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know half the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a lot of it uh, can come from uh, just looking at other works of art, mm -hmm. uh, animal life, uh, w uh, textures in nature. You know, there's so much reference everywhere if you mm -hmm. open your eyes and look. You just take a look, um, huh? Yeah, it, everything. You know, the, in my dragons, you know, my dragons are my passion. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to spend the rest of my life just drawing uh, dragons, but doing them in such a unique way that I can borrow reference from nature and plant life and you know, things in this, you know, in this realm and you know, and try and use it the best I can and make, you know, my fantasy creatures look more realistic. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing it all up in my head, you know, which I, I do, I, I come up with an idea, and then I'll look for a reference out in nature to make it more realistic. So what mediums are you using for something like this piece? Color pencil is uh, is a, really? a medium that I, I just love using. It's It was the first real chance for me to get into color was mm -hmm. through color pencil. And then I moved into gouache, which uh, the pink dragon down on the bottom here, mm -hmm. uh, that's done in gouache. Uh, and, and color pencil and gouache work really well together. Uh, and this one. And this this one has like almost a metallic kind of uh, look to it in a way. Uh, that, that one's done in oh, oils. That's my it? first oil painting mm -hmm. that I ever done. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I will be pursuing that in the future, but for now I'm, I'm quite content with the color pencil yeah. and the gouache. Is it difficult to transition from the pencil to the, to the oil? It was very difficult at first because you're working from a dry medium to a liquid medium. Mm -hmm. So there was certainly a, a you know, means of layering your color. It's, it's different, but you, if you know how to layer color, you just have to change it over from dry to wet. And then you have the mediums and all that fun stuff to learn. Right. You know? And how difficult is shading? Because uh, shading is so important too in your work. Uh, it's. It's all about, uh, for me, it was, it's just all about uh, steadiness of the hand, not applying really any pressure at all to blend the, the colors together. Uh, it's just a matter of repetition, and, and slowly but surely you start to just sort of feel it, I guess is the best word I right. can describe. Yeah. But like when you do a piece like this one, where do you start? Is it just a, a sketch, kind of, and then you work from there, and then it builds from? There are several places that I would start with a drawing. Uh, this one in particular, sometimes I'll look through my nature books to find a point of inspiration that mm -hmm. I can build from. And the, the face of this uh, dragon was used from a bear yeah. that I found. And I just loved how the teeth and the jaw were were folded over on the skin. And so I used that as the, as the structure of the face. And then I borrowed reference from a zebra to use for the stripes. And then the, the belly underneath is used from a snake. Mm -hmm. And then as, you, as I just start to kind of build it as I go, more and more things start to fall into place and then I start to have a better idea of where I want to take it. So where did you start? Did you start with the, with the, the head? With the face. Uh -huh. And then I built up from here and I really wasn't sure how to work it as a composition so then I did a sketch wow. of what it would look like if the neck the had coiled. Yeah, and so I thought, okay, well, if, if it works on a very small thumbnail sketch about this big, it's going to work on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. 
and so that's when I decide to bring the neck up and around and and the light coming out of his mouth I really can't tell you where that came from but yeah it I, really burst it, it I just thought that, that would be cool for instead of fire you know do yeah. maybe a source of light you know, something different that's very cool thank you now how big a, a pieces do you usually like to work with this are they all like within this kind of range I uh, yeah, uh, usually, uh, but lately I've been working on 30 by like 36 inch mm -hmm. illustration board and that's been really fun. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I love detail and when you work on something extremely big, you really get to, you know, work on the detail right. and much more. Have you been commissioned yet where someone says, hey, can you put something together for me yet? I have. Uh -huh. uh, I actually, uh, at the Sawdust, there was a, a lovely lady who came by and, and asked me if I would design a tattoo for her. And I've designed tattoos before. Um, uh, the commissions, I also do pet portraits. Uh -huh. uh, that will be something I'll be offering at the Sawdust as well. Uh, but yes, I have been asked for Great. commissions. And, and you also do some sculptures as well, right? Uh, uh, not, not Are they sculptures? They're kind of like pieces. I, I'm not really, you know, how do you describe that? Uh, sculptures, uh, I can see myself you know, getting into sculptures more mm -hmm. later on. As far as sculptures go, I think that I, when I do build sculptures, I use it for my reference. Oh. So if, if uh, like if I was to build a sculpture out of, you know, out of something like a, you know, like this dragon here, um, I would use a sort of light source to shine on the sculpture, and then I could see how the cast shadows are laid out, because then I can have a real reference to how the shadows would fall and the light would bounce off the subject. Yeah. And the, the, you know the the old masters have been using this technique for for right. eons. You know I'm I'm really not coming mm -hmm. up with anything new. I'm just I'm just doing what they did, and it really works well in, in my art. Yeah. Well, speaking of the masters, who were your influences as you oh, started to really draw? I got a big list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James Gurney, he's uh -huh. the author of Dinotopia. Oh, uh, yeah. He was a big big influence. Uh, Jeff uh, Easley, he's uh, a great artist for. Uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, another one is Braum, uh, Donato Giancola, uh, Julie Bell, right. Boris Blahill. Uh, all these artists I'm listing are are really well known in the fantasy illustration world. And, mm -hmm. and ever since I was a little girl, seeing their work and just you know someday just hoping that I could be as good as right. they were. Do you look at some of your pieces and see combinations of their techniques within it? Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm so uh, focused on it looking real that, you know, I can look at their work and, and see where I would find the inspiration to go in that route. Right. Um, but as far as my style, I hope my style can just be my own. Absolutely. You know. That's great. Well, they, these are some wonderful pieces, and you're there at the Sawdust. You're at booth, I believe. 312. 312. Where is that located once you walk into the Sawdust? Just as you walk into the Sawdust, you'll see... Uh, uh, you'll see a set of wooden stairs. You'll head towards those wooden stairs, but don't go up them. Make a right, uh -huh. and then just You're two right there. down. Are you there working throughout the festival? I'm there every day for Sunday and Monday. Uh -huh. Most of the time, I'll be at my job in Capistrano Beach. I work in the paint department, making all lumber. Oh, great! And yeah. it's just it's that the is. greatest job. <laughs> <laughs> I get to mix color yeah. all day long. Yeah. Do you go next door and get donuts every once in a while? No, <laughs> I gotta watch my family figure. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, we do encourage you to go down to the Sawdust Festival, take a look at some of April's work and uh, some wonderful pieces here. Um, and what are you going to be working on here in the future? You have a piece you're working on now? I do, mm -hmm. yes. It's a very large dragon. Big surprise. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's on illustration paper, about 30 by 36 inches. It's the biggest one I've ever done. Wow. And that'll be hanging hopefully soon. You know, I keep saying I'll finish it, and I always need more time. But right. That's the one I'm working on right now. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing that at some point. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the program today. And that's the Sawdust Festival. This is April Solomon, and she's there. And uh, be sure and stop by her booth and say hello. Say you saw her here on Channel 6. Take a look at some of this wonderful work. And uh, they are going to be there from June 28th, which obviously was last week. And you're there all the way until September 1st, huh? Mm -hmm. Great. A, a great time to come out to Laguna Beach and enjoy not only the wonderful city of Laguna Beach, but be a part of the Sawdust Art Festival as well. We're going to be back with the weather and to wrap up the program right after this.